All right, let us start this on. All right, so many artists who are new to texturing or 3D in general experience confusion when encountering bump, normal, and displacement maps for the first time. They all seem to do sort of the same thing, right? Well, the answer to that question is a resounding sort of kind of does that. Each one of these three types of maps creates something that looks like additional resolution or detail on the surface of geometry. Some of this detail is real and some of it really isn't. Uh, in this article, we will dive into each of these three maps and learn what each map does and what they don't. You'll also have a better grasp on the strengths and weaknesses of each type of map. So let's start with bump maps, all right? Bump maps create the illusion of depth and texture on the surface of a 3D model using computer graphics. Textures are artificially created on the surface of objects using grayscale and simple lighting tricks, rather than having to manually create individual bumps or cracks. Right, so you would add a map on onto this, so that you would get that that microsurface kind of detail on there. Right, this doesn't exist in this. What they're trying to do is give you that feel that you're getting a little more noise than 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 you're uh, actually getting. So, uh, bump maps are used. Right, they're they're used for things like that. So a bump map is actually one of the older types of maps we'll look at today. It's uh, one of the first I, I used to. I used in the sense that I think when I started, I don't know if normal maps were a thing like that, right? It wasn't until I got into my first 3D modeling kind of and rendering class, like my first like entire pipeline where it was nothing but high poly, low poly texture, high poly, low poly texture, high poly, low poly texture. That was, I think, the first time that I had encountered um, uh, bump maps or normal maps. Um, because I wasn't really doing any game asset stuff yet. So um, it was by uh, the, a teacher named Brett Briley, and he was the guy that was really the guy that taught me the process of high poly, low poly texture, high poly, low poly texture, and to do it over and over until it becomes second nature to you. Right. So, yeah, the first thing you should understand about bump maps is that the detail they create is fake. No additional resolution is added to the model as a result of a bump map. Typically, bump maps are uh, grayscale images that are limited to eight bits of color information. All right. So. There's actually nothing there, right? It's not like there you're, you're adding extra geometry. It's not moving mesh or anything like that. All you're doing is faking the eye, right? It's a it's it's a it's um, it's based on a grayscale value, right? So that's only about 256 different colors of black, gray, or white. These values in a bump map are used to tell the 3D soft software basically two things up or down right so what we're trying to say is all right uh when values in a bump map are close to 50 percent gray there is little to no detail uh that comes through on the surface so it's a relatively smooth flat surface when the values get brighter working their way to white details appear to pull out of the surface Right. But the opposite is also true when they go uh, below that 50 percent and they dip closer to black, then you're pushing in uh, you're, you're you're giving the appearance that the uh, the mesh or the, the appearance is that it's pushing in to the surface. All right. So to contrast that, when values get darker and closer to black, they appear to be pushing into the surface. Bump maps are really great for creating tiny details on a model. For example, pores or wrinkles on skin. Uh, they are also relatively easy to create and edit in a 2D application like Photoshop, considering you're just using grayscale values, right? So that's uh, as pretty much as simple as it gets is that, you know, you just use it as 
uh, one, uh, one, zero, or negative one, right? That's how that's how I would visually think about it. Is one is white, zero is gray, and the negative one is black. So that's the value. Uh, that's the range value uh, that you're gonna get. All right. So let me move this guy out of the way. This guy's annoying me. It's a bit of a know-it-all. All right. So let's move on. So bump maps, the problem with bump maps is that they break pretty easily if the camera views them from the wrong angle. Since the detail they create is fake and not real resolution being added, the silhouette of the geometry that the bump map is applied to will always be unaffected by the map. So at glancing angles, right, like at this angle right here, you're not getting any of that roughness. It's not like boop, 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 boop. It's not like a bunch of little bumps that you see right there. The reason is because it's not adding any geo to it. There's no actual geo. It's just a camera trick. It's just a visual trick. Right? This is how they've been tricking you into buying all these games all this time. It's all a trick. It's all magic. That's how I like to explain it. It's just magic, baby. It's just magic. All right? So um, let's go on to uh, what they really look like. So there are, the bump maps are uneven whenever it comes to rendering effects. But if you use tangent space maps, you can have a more even rendering effects uh, even at the extreme edges. It gets close to it, but no matter what, you're not going to get that bumpity bump 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 on the edges because it's not actually moving the geometry. I want you guys to remember my my voice saying those words. It doesn't actually move the geometry. That's a bump map. All right? It fakes the detail but doesn't actually change the geometry. All right? So, what we're doing when we're creating normal maps, I don't know if anybody's ever explained this to you. Um, you guys have created normal maps to this date. To this date, you guys, if you've done your coin, I can't say everybody because I've seen some of your pages. You ain't this shit. Um, most of you have done your work and you have made a normal map. So this is the idea behind a normal map. So light reflects using the texture normal instead of the surface. So here's the actual uh, so the surface and then they bounce light off of it. So here's your low poly. Here's your high poly Right, we're gonna bounce that light. It's gonna come back out and We're gonna project all of this fun information onto our Surface so normal maps can be referred to as a newer a better type of bump map as The bump map as with bump maps the first thing you need to understand about normal maps is that the detail create is also fake. This is also fake detail. There's no additional resolution added to the geometry in your scene. In the end, a normal map does create the illusion of depth detail on the depth detail on the surface of a model, but it does it differently than the bump map, right? Because what we're doing is we're baking the resolution, we're baking all of the fun stuff from the high poly and then projecting it back onto our low poly mesh. Here's our low poly, here's our high poly. We send out those lights, they bring back our magic photons and then we can project it on our low poly because we are wizards and magicians. That's what we do. You are all going to Hogwarts and you are all in Gryffindor. No, Slytherin. Okay, normal maps. As we already know, a bump map uses grayscale values to provide either up or down information. A normal map uses RGB information that corresponds directly with the X, Y, and Z axis in 3D space. This RGB information tells the 3D application that the exact direction of the surface normals are oriented uh, in for each and every single polygon. All right. So normal maps, the orientation of the uh, surface normal, often just referred to as normals, uh, tells the 3D application how the polygon should be shaded. In learning about normal maps, you should know that there are three totally different types. These three types 
look completely different when viewed in 2D space. And when we talk about 2D space, we mean like a flat image, flat, flat. That's 2D, two dimensions, all right? So uh, the most common used is called a tangent space normal map and is a mixture of primarily purples and blue, right? The ones that you guys have been rendering out are just that. They are tangent space normals, right? So there are also object space normals and world space normals, and they are calculated slightly different. The, the interesting is, the interesting thing is that um, Substance Painter actually calculates your world space normal as well, because it uses it for positional detail, right? All right, so, and that's going to be later whenever we do our PBR stuff. Uh, you guys will learn more about tangent space normals, world space normals, and all that stuff. But let's let's dive in a little bit to some of these. So, uh, as the name implies, tangent space normals are based on the tangent direction of each face, right? These maps are always made up of a combination of three colors. Blue shows what has a slope in the normal direction. Red shows what has a slope in the left and right tangent direction. And green shows what has an up or down slope in the tangent direction. OpenGL normal maps have the green sloping up, while DirectX maps have the green sloping down. And in certain applications, well, I'll say, oh, snap, I need to flip the Y, or I need to you know, flip the green channel. Right, because depending on if I baked out using OpenGL or DirectX, right, I might have to flip that channel for my normal map to be appearing correctly. Right, for it to look right, I might need to flip my green channel depending on what uh, what open source if I'm using OpenGL or uh, DirectX uh, rendering. All right. So object space normal maps are based on the entire object instead of each face individually. This is slightly faster for a graphics card to compute, but it does have some drawbacks. Since the right side will be a different color than the left side, no UVs can be mirrored, meaning that a lot of texture space will be wasted on symmetrical models. This also means that if the object twists around, the shading will appear flipped. So when it comes to world space normal maps, uh, world space maps are the least flexible of all since they are based on global coordinates, why, why, which is, it's in the name, right? If you guys think about what the name is, you can usually get a hint about what it does. Uh, so, since they're based on global coordinates, the object may not rotate at all in order to pres preserve the correct shading. This type of normal map is used for large, static, and asymmetrical objects like env environments or used temporarily in programs like Substance Painter as a means to calculate weathering effects, which is what I was telling you guys earlier. Is that Programs like Substance Painter calculate your world space normals for every single object you bring in because they have a lot of weathering effects that are that use that and use your cavity map to uh, to apply that information to your model. So there are three different types of um, normal maps: the tangent space, the object space, and the world space normal map. And you know which ones you guys use the most which is the tangent space, and you know that now Substance Painter bakes all, well, I don't think it bakes object space out. It bakes out world space, for sure. Uh, and it uses that in your weathering effects. So next time you look at your Substance Painter, if you go to your coin and you hit, I wanna say it's B on your keyboard, what B does is it cycles through all your maps. So it, you can just hit B, 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 and it'll cycle through all of the maps, and you'll see that it has a world space normal map baked in there for you. So which one of these is tangent and which one is object? All right, guys, I need somebody to answer this one for me. 
So is this object or tangent based right here? The right guy. I'm going to call somebody, whoever's in this chat. Coco. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a call from my college. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, is Francisco here? Go, somebody. I think the one to the right is the tangent. Tangent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see who's next. Ghost. What's what's this guy? Is everybody dead? I, I think so. I think everybody kind of died. Okay, they ended up not actually saying anything. Um, the the tangent one is um, the one on the right. Nice, nice. All right. So the left one is what? Object space. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It was like pulling teeth, but I am a dentist apparently. That's fine. All right. So normal maps. See, these maps work best for meshes that have to deform during animation. Tangent space normal maps are great for things like characters, for assets that don't need to deform. Oftentimes, an object space normal uh, map is used. These maps have a rainbow assortment of different colors, as well as slightly improved performance over tangent space normals. All right, so that is without normal maps. That is the normal map added, and that is what it looks like with normals. All right, so for uh, some cool points, does anybody know who this character is? Cool, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. You guys uh, just uh, earned some cool points in my book. I'm glad you guys know who this is. All right, normal maps. Uh, so there are definitely some things you need to be aware of when considering using a normal map. Unlike a bump map, these types of maps can be very difficult to create or edit in a 2D software like Photoshop. Likely, you will bake a normal map out using a high resolution version of your mesh uh, there are, however, some exceptions for editing these types of maps. So, uh, Mari, for example, has the ability to paint the type of nor uh, surface normal information we see in a normal map. When it comes to support, normal maps are pretty well integrated into most pipelines. Unlike a bump map, there are exceptions to this rule. One of those would be mobile game design. Only recently has hardware really evolved to the point where mobile games are beginning to adopt normal mapping into their pipeline. Most games have maybe two or three maps, um, and it's usually packed into like very, very compact uh, map structures. Like they'll use like a diffuse spec, and that's it. You know, just because the hardware on a phone is has been abysmal until uh, quite recently uh, and now there are some phones that are starting to use I think there's certain games on online that have normal maps in them and stuff now so we're getting to that point where we can start to use normals and that's uh, that's getting really cool for for mobile gaming all right so displacement uh, last but never the least, displacement. Displacement is actually pretty cool. When it comes to creating additional detail for your low resolution mesh, displacement maps are king. These types of maps physically displace, as the name implies, the mesh to which they are applied. In order for detail to be created based on a displacement map, usually the mesh must be subdivided or tessellated so real geometry is created and you guys really haven't used displacement maps yet um, but I believe you will be pretty soon I want to say on the next one or two projects you'll be using displacement maps all right so displacement map the great thing about displacement maps is that they can actually be either baked from a high resolution map or painted by hand like a bump map, a displacement map consists of gray scale values. Uh, here is the real kicker though. While you can use an 8 bit displacement map, you will almost always experience better results 
by using a 16 or 32 bit displacement map because you're going to have more color information and better resolution that's it's plain and simple like it's you just you have much more bit depth information there's more a much wider value range a much wider color range that you have in 32 bits than you have in 8 bits all right so while 8 bits files may look good in 2D space uh, when brought into 3D, they can sometimes cause banding or other artifacts as a result of the insufficient range in value. Now, here's the not so great thing about displacement maps. Creating all that additional geometry in real time is extremely difficult and hard on your system. Because of this, most 3D applications calculate final displacement results at render time. Yes, 3ds Max is one of those programs that does that will allow you to calculate your displacement at render time. Uh, I have used displacement to make like a mountain range or something like just like this photo. I've used it for just that, and it's quite simple. You just import it in there, and it actually creates the the geometry. And after this, I can open up 3ds Max and show you. Uh, an example of a, a displacement map. All right, so let's, let's move on. So in comparison to bump or normal maps, a displacement map will also add significant time to your render. As a result of this additional geometry, it's hard to beat the results of a displacement map. Since the surface is actually modified, the silhouette reflects the additional geometry. You should always weigh the expense of the displacement map against the added benefit before deciding to use one. All right. So, um, has anybody heard of Substance Designer? I know you guys have heard of Substance Painter, but you guys ever heard of Substance Designer? No? Okay, that's fine. It's fine. It's not like a gotcha question or anything like that. It's a... Uh, it's just another program. It's made by the same guys who make Substance Painter, and uh, it's primarily used for texture authoring. So they author textures or shaders inside of there, and it uses displacement maps to push and pull the geometry. Um, I have. I'll, I'll show you guys what what it looks like. And I used to require uh, my students to to do it, and um, you guys have five weeks, so you guys aren't going to get to that point in this class. But that's it's perfectly fine. You guys still know about it, right? So when it, let's put it all together. Let's bring it all together. In some cases, it may be possible for you to combine either a uh, a bump or normal map with a displacement map on the same asset. The best way to do this would be to utilize displacement for the big changes to the geometry and then the normal or bump for the fine detail, regardless of which map you choose to use. Understanding how each map works and both its strengths as well as its weaknesses will only make your decision easier. Ultimately, the map you go with should be the one that best fits the needs of the scenario you find yourself dealing with. All right. So I say that to say that um, not every project is going to require normal maps. Not every model is going to require displacement, bump, like it's, you know, it's a case by case kind of basis, right? Um, if I'm making something like Gears of War or Halo, okay, I'm going to need to use my normal maps, right? I'm going to need to use some of those. If I'm doing like a cutscene or something like that, right? I don't want to use a bump map on the face of a character like Nathan Drake, who's like sup supposed to be like as close to realistic as possible. I would probably use a displacement map, right, to get to actually push and pull those because we're not playing it or anything. The geometry count doesn't really matter. So it's OK to displace. So it's a situation by situation kind of basis. And what I want to train you guys to do is to think for yourself. Right. I'm not going to give you cookie cutter answers. I'm not going to say use this all the time. There's no such thing in 3D. Right. You figure out what needs to be done for the project that you're working on. Right. So 
it's more important for you guys to kind of think for yourselves and say, okay, this is what this does. Does it look like I need this for my project? No, okay, let me use this, right? And then use them as you need. All right, so let's open up 3ds Max, or actually let's open up World Machine as well, because World Machine is the perfect way to show you guys what I mean by uh, displacement. So World Machine is a program that uses uh, displacement uh, to push and pull geometry. So if I open up the 3D view, right, it uses it's using this displacement map which is this guy to drive this information right here All right so if i added no if i added more resolution to it So right now the resolution is 513 by 513, but if I, if I added 2048 or something, if I did 2048, or just boop. Well, it's gonna add a plus one because uh, of terrain stuff. I can uncheck that and it's gonna be 2048 by 2048, which is fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna okay. And it's gonna increase that resolution. So let's now build, build. Right, you see how much more detail that 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 got because it's got more resolution in it. All right, so that's an uh, That's like a it's like a basic, basic uh, form of displacement in 3ds Max. Whenever it opens up, I'll show you guys how 3ds Max uh, handles some of its displacement. Here's a way that you can use displacement inside of a uh, inside of 3ds Max. Okay, so I've got some of these kind of topographical maps that I'm going to use to uh, to bring inside of. So I'll show you the one I'm, I've got right here. So this one is. So the the dimensions of this is 1081 by 1081. So we can just make a, a plane here, right? Make it top view. All right, Alt W, and then P Z G W. Let's then center that bad boy, and then we're gonna add our U V W map just so we can. Actually, let's just add this displacement just so I can show you guys real quick. So there's this displace mesh here. So it's displace, and then we're gonna find this image. And I'm just gonna copy and paste where it is on my file, just so you guys can. Uh, it's something I just downloaded, I think, off of uh, off Google. It's nothing uh, special. I can just. Drag and drag, I just dragged it and dropped it into that one as well. So now you can see that there's nothing happening. Look at this, there's nothing happening. But if I start to increase the strength, you see that it's messing with that geometry. And the reason that I'm not getting a good, um, accurate representation of what that bitmap actually looks like, let me show you what that bitmap looks like again. So you see that I, this is what it looks like, but mine doesn't look like that. And the reason is because I don't have enough geometry to support the the uh, I don't have enough geometry to support that displacement information. So if I went into my length and my width segments, and I just threw in a thousand length segments and a thousand width segments, and then I hit my displace and I increase my strength, you guys will see the difference in 
our map. All right, look at that. Just like that, you can create easy terrain inside of 3ds Max. Right? The reason it looks so good is because this is actual geometry, right? We're displacing actual actual geo to create this. And I can increase the strength, right? All right. So that's pretty much my my talk on normal maps. With normal maps, you're not going to get this. It will still be flat, right? If you look at your coin from glancing angles, that divot isn't there in your in your coin, right? Like it doesn't exist. But if you made it a displacement, oh, it would exist. You'd have to have more geometry in it, but it would it could essentially exist if you put uh, it in the displacement map, all right? So that is going to be the lecture for today. Does anybody have any questions for me? Any questions? When is the still life due? The the drawing? Uh I mean by the next one. I think that's Wednesday. Any other questions? Um when I was making my low poly, mm -hmm. I ran into a problem where the like when when we had to import it into um uh what's its face um substance painter yeah we, uh you know how you had to click like the okay button down at the bottom mm -hmm. uh, uh my screen and its barriers was like the barriers on my screen were too big mm -hmm. so then the okay can't fit on my screen and i can't import it oh uh, just press enter Really? Yeah, it, yeah. I, I clicked enter and all that, and it, and it still didn't work. And I tried changing my screen and everything, and none, none of it worked. Oh, okay. Um, maybe you can, uh, if you grab that window, maybe you can slam it to the top, and then maybe it'll, it'll, um, it'll resize itself. Because if you're just saying that the window's not sized properly, it does it's. I can't change the size because I think the size is stuck that big. And when I change the size of like the actual screen, it, that size stays the same. Mm. Um, I ran into the same issue, but I did the I did it very easily. Uh, I don't know if it's I can show this on the screen. Is that you know how we you know how you can minimize the screen manually? Mm -hmm. Could you show Honk that? Because that that's what I did, and I don't know if Honk knows how to minimize the screen manually or not in substance painter or any yeah, program just, uh, just any window yeah because you know, that's what i did oh okay yeah you just drag it like this guy right yeah and then you know how you can if you go to the barriers of the windows you can drag it even more down yeah yeah you can do that honk yeah you no know, yeah i'm saying that that's the okay screen where you click and import it you can't my i can't change the size of that it won't let me change that size. And then if I try to change the size of like the actual substance painter and then click import, the, the size is the, still the same. So what you're saying is here, whenever you try to do this, this okay wow. is blacked out or it's like right here? Yeah, and I, and I can't move it. Okay, so let's see. What you can do is you can just hit tab. Okay. So I have it on select now. But when I leave it, if I hit tab, it takes me directly to OK, and then you can just press Enter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, tab is pretty much for everything on your screen. Like, you can tab through anything. You can pretty, you know, like, if you hit Alt and tab, it'll it'll pull up, you know, all your windows. It's like kind of like a, an easy window changer kind of thing. So, yeah, try the Alt tab, and that should fix your issue. In worst case scenario, if that doesn't work, what, what, what should I do? Uh, just try to reopen Substance Painter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the only thing, you know, that's one of those, it's software. It's, it's, it's really not the software. It's more the lap, the computer that you're using or whatever, rem whatever you're remoting into that has that yeah, issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Uh, maybe you can change the resolution of the remote desktop. Oh okay. yeah. yeah, so try it, you know, try uh just tabbing it and then you'll be uh, you'll be good to go. Any other questions? Okay. All right. So now we can move on to uh this week's model. This week's model is going to be let's see. Oh, this is that's for you guys next week. I don't want to scare you guys too much yet. So let's go to YouTube. Okay, so your high poly for the crate should be up. And ready to go. All right, so um, I'm gonna show you guys. So I was looking at this class, and I'm gonna show you guys how um, how much I care about you guys. Cause uh, I, f I the first crate I was gonna have you guys do, um, I think it would have scared you guys a little bit. And I was like, man, I. I just don't want to scare these guys with the stuff that I'm about to, but I'm, but I'm about to give them. So let me show you guys uh, what I meant. Okay, so I was going to have you guys make this. Where is it? Alright, so this is the crate I was going to have you guys make. It's like this military crate, and I made it like inside and out. And I was like, man, that's like... <laughs> For you guys, that might be like two weeks to just do that. And then I was going to take it in a ZBrush and do all this stuff in ZBrush. And I was like, all right, Ty. Um, uh, no, 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 no. So I will put this up as like a bonus for you guys to do in the future if you guys like want to ever make this. Right. But, you know, uh, just to see, just to show you guys what you guys were saved from. Uh, that's it. But this is what you guys are going to make. You guys are going to make this crate instead. So this is the crate you guys are going to make. Uh, the, the videos are up for them. Uh, you guys can go check them out. Uh, other than that, uh, that's it for the class, guys. That's it. Go start your next project. Go start your next uh, modeling assignment. It's up. It's ready for you guys. Does anybody have any questions? And this crate is due Friday or Monday? Friday? The high poly is due Friday. Yes, 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 yes. I was like, man, because if I was like, I was just thinking, I was like, if I had this project, and it's my first, like, my first modeling real class, would I be? I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do that to him. But this one is easy. You literally only make one side, and then you can like duplicate it around. So like, you guys, if if you guys aren't done by the end of this week, I'll be highly surprised. Highly surprised. Right, you guys should be able to get this and knock it out really quickly. Get really quick. Get ready to be surprised. Get, get ready to be surprised. <laughs> now you guys haven't disappointed me yet. You guys are good. You guys are good. You guys got this. I believe in y'all. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. So yeah, that's the. That's it. That's it, guys. All right. So.